welcome to GlideFast On Air. I'm Lauren Jankowski, the Marketing Manager here at GlideFast, and I'll be moderating today's webinar, How to Optimize Customer Service with Virtual Agent and 3C Logic. I'm excited to announce to you your presenters for today, Josh Brostoff, a Senior Architect and Service Delivery Manager from GlideFast Consulting, and G, the VP of Business Development at 3C Logic. Before we get started, I'd like to give you some background information on GlideFast. GlideFast Consulting is a consulting firm that is dedicated exclusively to ServiceNow. As an elite ServiceNow partner, our expert team of developers and architects have worked on both sides of the table, on the customer side and the consulting side. Our company was founded by architects and we're proud to have a team of over 100 experienced consultants, an average CSAT score of a 9.7, and many more accolades as you can see here. Now I'm gonna let G tell you guys a little bit about 3C Logic. Thanks, Lauren, and uh, thanks for those of you joining us today. So once again, my name is Guillaume G for short, uh, working here at 3C Logic as the Vice President of Business Development. 3C Logic is uh, a cloud call center platform uh, that specializes in complementing the digital channels, which we're going to cover here, myself and Josh, uh, within ServiceNow. And really, it's to help fulfill that voice component if and when individuals feel need to interact with a live uh, agent. And it can be leveraged across the ServiceNow platform for customer service, uh, employee help desk uh, or, or IT services. We're actually built on Amazon Web Services. We have global deployments. It says four. It's actually now on five continents. Uh, we're the number one ranked technology application on the ServiceNow store. And uh, one of our call to fames was we won one of the first hackathons uh, at ServiceNow Knowledge 18. So looking forward to uh, sharing with you some of the benefits of uh, what 3C Logic and ServiceNow can bring together. Awesome. Thanks, G, and uh, thanks for joining us on today's webinar. And as another perk of all of you attendees today, we'll be giving away a $50 Visa gift card at the very end of the webinar. So you make sure you stay on to the end and we'll announce the winner then. I'll be monitoring the Q&A throughout today's session, so please send in any questions as they arise and we'll do our best to answer them. Now I'd like to hand things over to G to get started. Yeah, thanks, Lauren. So it always helps to anchor any conversation with just a few facts, right? Uh, sort of get an understanding of what is it we're talking about today and what, what problems or use cases are we trying to solve for? And what I find interesting is in this age of digital transformation, it should come as no surprise to, to those uh, you know, who've attended today that uh, three out of four, 75% of most customer journeys uh, will actually originate in digital channels. Now, the definition of a digital channel uh, is going to be something along the lines of uh, self-service, email, chat, chatbots, uh, and so forth. Um, but what's interesting is while a lot of conversations may start there, within the whole concept of, of omni-channel, um, a third, 33% of those conversations will actually end or find their way to a live agent. So what we're going to discuss today here is not um, whether or not digital channels have uh, a place in the customer service value chain. Uh, I think that argument has been settled. The answer is absolutely yes. But it's really how can you make sure that that is equally complemented uh, with uh, voice and telephony services so that if and when a situation gets escalated, gets complex, um, is time sensitive, that your agents are available and your customers for that matter able to reach them uh, in a timely fashion. And this pandemic, uh, as a perfect example, you can imagine call volumes across call centers went up. Uh, so one of the things we're going to want to try and solve for is how can we balance, balance those needs uh, with uh, some of the deflection that digital channels can, can offer, which of course uh, my friend Josh is going to cover first. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, G. Uh, thanks for everyone to, for joining today and really looking forward to talking more with you about virtual agent and uh, open frame as well. So just before I get started, uh, for everyone on the line, my name is Josh Brostoff. I'm a senior ServiceNow architect at GlideFast Consulting. I've been working on the ServiceNow platform for over six years um, and done multiple different virtual agent implementations. So that's kind of one of my, my areas of, of specialty, which I'll be focusing on today during the webinar. Uh, just a little bit of an overview in the agenda that we're gonna be talking today. First and foremost, what is virtual agent? So giving you a better understanding of uh, you know, how it's used on the ServiceNow platform and the value it provides to customers and really the art of the possible, right? So kind of giving you an idea, how can you deliver value to your customers uh, that you have with virtual agent and do things like call deflection and, and other things like that and the different channels you can use it in as well. Um, then I'm going to be handing it off to G to kind of talk about open frame CTI and, you know, how it works um, he's going to give you a little, you know, run through as well, 
and he's going to transition into a demo to, to talk about that as well. And then at the end, we'll open it up uh, for Q&A. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat um, throughout the course of this presentation. Awesome. So we're going to start off by just talking really what is Virtual Agent, right? So Virtual Agent is a conversational bot platform um, for providing assistance and it's completely built on the ServiceNow platform. Um, so one of the really nice things about this is it helps your end users and your, your customers as well self-resolve their issues um, without having to do things like necessarily contact a live agent. So it's really important in that kind of self-service model that your organization may be trying to, um, you know, adapt to and, and adopt. So, you know, that, that's one of the, the main pieces of this. And as part of it, um, you can display virtual agent on your service portal. So whether you have a customer service portal um, or you're using virtual agent for your internal IT, you can have what are called these different topics where essentially, depending on what a user types in, you can kick off certain topics. So something very key to remember, um, which a lot of people, you know, ask about is virtual agent, you're not interacting with a live agent. You can transition to one, but all of this is being done virtually through what's called a topic. So it really takes a user through a workflow um, and is, it really guides them to what they need without having to, you know, interact with that live person. So this is really, you know, what's great about this is you don't have to staff up your service desk. Um, or your, you know, necessarily your call center as you once, once had before, because a lot of this you can do through these virtual agent topics. So just kind of showing you on the screen here, um, how this would unfold and how it looks in service. Now you can have the messages which are sent from virtual agent, as well as how the bot responds. Um, and there's all different types of functionality, which I'll be walking you through um, during this presentation as well. So like I was kind of, you know, saying before, this really helps drive this self-service based model. So we're living in a time where people don't want to, you know, they, they want to resolve their own issues. They don't want to have to always call in or always chat with a live person. They want to just be able to, to do it themselves. Um, that's, that's, and that's great for both parties because not only does it help uh, your organization with call deflection and incident or case deflection, but it also helps that individual get the answers that they need faster than ever before. Um, and like I was saying, it really requires that you staff up, you know, you don't have to spend as much money necessarily staffing your service desk or your call center um, to be able to field these common and repeatable questions. So that's one thing that's, you know, virtual agent is really good at doing is following repeatable questions that um, that get asked, right? So whether it's about a warranty on a product, what's the status of, of my case? There's all different types of out of the box topics and for um, various different categories that we'll be reviewing as well as part of this. So that's one of the really strong things that that virtual agent does a, as part of it. So the different components of a virtual agent, so there's really different three main components. There's the conversational interface. So this is what the user actually sees when they come into your service portal, whether it be internal or external facing. Um, and, and something that's really nice as well is you can actually have this so someone doesn't even need to be logged in. Um, so someone can access this conversational interface um, you know, publicly. So whether you're using it for state government or your company, you know, there's, it's really nice that people don't actually need to log in and you can embed it on external sites um, as an iframe. It's also supported on mobile as well. So not only are, are people able to access this directly from their browser, they can do it from their mobile device, which is, which is really great. And it also integrates with Slack and Microsoft Teams. Um, so these are really plug and play. There isn't a lot of coding that you need to do to set this up. So you don't need to necessarily go and, you know, hire a developer to build an integration to one of these applications. You actually get this out of the box, which is great. The second main piece of this is the virtual agent designer. So this is if for those of you who may be similar with the workflow editor, it's a very no code, low code um, application. And what I mean by that is it's very drag and drop functionality. So depending on how someone, you know, types in an input 
to the virtual agent chat, you can have it respond to people with what you determine, right? So there, there's not a lot of coding that you need to do as part of this. Obviously you do have that capability to be able to customize things a little bit further, um, but that's one of the really nice pieces of it. And it can also be used for various different pieces of your, you know, depending on what your use case is, right? So whether you're using it for customer service management, HR or IT, um, it, we, you know, ServiceNow supports those out of the box, which is great. And then also, if you can't get your issue resolved, people also want to be able to call in. Um, and that's really where virtual agent ties in nicely to, you know, 3C's logic solution is being able to call in if they can't get their issue resolved. Um, because like you were saying, there is always going to be those people who prefer to call in or just virtual agent can't resolve their issue. So there, are all the, there also is um, capability for that as well, which is great. Some examples of the conversations that come out of the box with virtual agent as part of CSM and IT service management are very repeatable things, right? So whether they need to check their case status, they need to get help with an order um, or a product. So it has, you know, direct use cases for customer service management, but also internally as well. So if someone needs to submit something through the service catalog or they need to reset their password, very repeatable things that your organization um, or your service desk may be doing today, virtual agent can handle. So you really start to get a lot of that call deflection um, and incident or case deflection through this by starting to automate a lot of those processes. So your you know, agents can spend more time actually focusing on more complex issues and kind of offload some of that to the virtual agent solution within ServiceNow. So like I was saying, there is, um, you know, there's, there's four main pieces of this that are plugins with ServiceNow that you get and you get some, a lot of really, really strong out of the box functionality. So you don't have to build your topics from scratch. Uh, ServiceNow gives you those through ITSM, virtual agent conversations, HR and CSM as well. So a lot of the things that are repeatable from organization to organization, they give you as, as part of this as well. Um, and there's the core piece of it that, that comes into play as well, which kind of turns on everything all at once. So with that being said, what I'm going to do is kind of just transition into a live demo of virtual agent within ServiceNow, just to kind of give you a better idea of how this works. All right. So um, what you can see here is basically we have the virtual agent interface, right? So whether you are using this um, for customer service management, HR, or IT, you can embed it into the service portal. It's very drag and drop. Um, and it's also supported on mobile as well. Um, so here's an example of, of this coming up. You have the interface, the bot responses, as well as what the user wants to type in. And what's really nice is the user can type something in and there's what's called natural language understanding. So this is a really um, strong piece of this where People can type something in and you can actually train ServiceNow through machine learning to actually respond back and guide them towards the right topic as part of this. So if we go ahead, you can either type something in or you can actually pick from a topic that exists. So for this one here, let's just say I wanted to go, help, go ahead and get help with a product. Um, the system is going to ask you to briefly describe your question or issue. And for example, let's, let's say that I had a, you know, a question about my computer. And what it does is it's going to bring up everything in a knowledge base. So if you have relevant knowledge articles related directly to a product or something else, um, those can come up and those can really help drive case deflection as well. Um, and if someone, you know, if they're not able to get their issue resolved, virtual agent can even do things like going ahead and creating you a case. So it will ask you, do you want to create a case? And it can actually auto generate one for you uh, right from the client, which is great. And you can obviously click the link and get taken to it. Um, there's all types of other out of the box topics as well. And of course you can build your own, uh, but just to kind of give you an idea of other things that you can do as well. If I wanted to start a new conversation here, um, let's just go ahead and start up a new one just to see some of the other things that it can do. You can do things like you can choose uh, to get transferred to a live agent. You can check your case status. So if I wanted to see all of my outstanding cases and actually see where something is, 
you don't have to call in to actually get more information um, about the status of your, of your case or your incident or something else. Also from the top here as well, um, like, you know, like G was saying, you're not always going to be able to resolve your issues um, directly through virtual agents. So you also have the ability to call support. So this ties in very nicely to 3C Logic Solution, where it can actually route you directly um, to an agent through the phone, or you can also pick to get routed to a live agent directly from there as well. So what I'm gonna do to kind of just give you a better idea of some of the capabilities that you can have around virtual agent. So we're gonna go into what's called the designer. And this is really where you can actually create your own topics. You can actually, you know, copy out of the box topics as well, and then build them depending on your organization's use case. Um, so for example, the one that I just picked here, let's go ahead into this get help with a product. You'll see that what's really nice about this is it's very no code, low code. It's a lot of drag and drop functionality, building a workflow about how you want to interface with, uh, with your end users or your customers, right? So you can see that there's someone typing in a short description. You can execute a search against the knowledge base. If the user is not able to find what they want, you can actually go ahead and auto generate a case um, directly from here. And you can actually embed other topics uh, within other ones as well. So you can reuse them. So that's a really nice piece. You don't have to recreate things from scratch. Um, obviously, if you wanted to, you can embed scripts but you can do things like responding with images, uh, cards which show newly created cases. You can present users with lists that they can pick from and all other things like that. Um, so really a ton of capability around being able to design your own topics depending on your organization's use case. And obviously you get a ton of these different topics that ServiceNow gives you out of the box um, with Virtual Agent, whether it be for HR, CSM, or just ITSM as well. One of the really nice pieces is how easy it is to set this up. So, you know, typically for other, you know, implementations of other products, I would say virtual agent is a lot easier to set up just by how ServiceNow does this. So really you can configure things like a greeting topic, um, an, Eric topic an error topic, or transferring to a live agent directly from the screen. So really easy to set this up. It doesn't take you know, a lot of going into these individual topics, drilling down and deciding which decision to make. You can make topics that are actually universal to everything. So really they give you a great way to be able to, to do this um, as well as setting up natural language understanding for your topics as well. They do give you, you know, what are called utterances. So depending on what someone types in, you can direct them uh, to a topic directly from that utterance. So again, there's just so many different pieces that you can do for your organization's specific use case um, in continuing to deliver better customer service, whether it's driving case deflection and, and saving your organization money, while also having a great user experience um, by allowing them to self-resolve, or if they need to, it can tie in directly um, to you know, something like 3C Logic Solution where you can actually do it you know, directly from virtual agent and just call in if they're not able to get their issue resolved. So what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and transition uh, back to G at this point. So I'm going to go ahead um, and he's going to talk to you a little bit about OpenFrame. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate that. So yeah, so so picking back uh, or picking off where you left off. So what is OpenFrame? Uh, well, OpenFrame is a uh, is a platform component within ServiceNow that allows you to embed voice uh, as part of the agent experience within ServiceNow, which I'll show you in the live demonstration. And for those of you who don't know what CTI stands for, it's computer telephony integration. So effectively, what you're doing is allowing agents from a single agent workspace, uh, in this case, the ServiceNow agent workspace, to have telephony be part of that agent experience and solve for that telephony channel as a compliment again to, to all the things that, uh, that Josh covered. So some of the value propositions, one, an integrated CTI is gonna give you that single agent experience. Uh, if people are working from home today, uh, which obviously is sort of the growing trend, uh, they don't necessarily have the luxury of having the same uh, multi-screen capacity that they might have or have been used to in the office. So being able to put everything in a consolidated yet workable fashion, CTI sort of allows that for you. Um, on the flip side, uh, it, again, is an extension to the digital channels that ServiceNow 
uh, solves for. So now you're trying to solve or actually bring together really a complete omni-channel experience. And the goal here is not to weigh one channel against another so much as to make sure or acknowledge the fact that customers are going to call you from everywhere. Um, and so at that point, or may try to reach you across multiple channels, at which point you just want to make sure that you're available uh, on those, those instances. Uh, you can also leverage information from ServiceNow to help really improve uh, the customer as well as, for that matter, the agent experience. Um, so by that, I mean no different than the way in which you're using knowledge base uh, to present articles using the virtual agent. When you have a customer coming in through a live feed like telephony, can you identify who the caller is, why they might be calling, and more importantly, who's going to be the qualified agent to fulfill, facilitate that inquiry? And then what can you automatically present to the agent uh, from the ServiceNow purview that's going to allow them to just dive into that inquiry? So an example would be, let's say Josh is a customer calling in about an issue. That case happens to be a case assigned to me as the agent. Wouldn't it be an amazing experience if I, as the customer, could automatically be presented to Josh um, so that he can go ahead and tackle my issue because presumably he's the one most informed about what it is that uh, that inquiry uh, might require. And last but not least, uh, you know, we talked about remote enablement, right? The idea that wherever you're able to access ServiceNow, you have an internet connection, then presumably you have the equal ability to also field calls. So again, in this remote world that we find ourselves in, can you make sure that if and when people call, and again, it's typically when things have reached a degree of escalation, so typically it's relatively important, uh, that you're available, can you make sure that you have that business continuity regardless of where your agents may be, right? And so if you talk about the components, number one, ServiceNow OpenFrame. Uh, it's a platform component that's available to you in all releases since Madrid. Um, you just have to enable it and we'll go through some of where, where that resides within ServiceNow and how you can leverage it. And again, in this case, we'll use our own solution as an example. Um, and at the same time, the goal here is to not just solve for telephony, but all of the workflows that go into it. So some of the typical acronyms you might hear, an IVR, an ACD, skill-based routing, these are all fancy terms for workflow management. Um, so I'll show you just how you can easily create uh, a customer experience, no different than the experience uh, that it takes to build uh, a, you know, the virtual agent. And then again, using uh, ASR, or Advanced Speech Recognition, or Text-to-Speech, um, you can still do self-service use cases over telephony, um, but if and when there's a need to, you can obviously forward it to the most qualified agent. Uh, and hopefully at that point, they'll have the tools available to, to solve the issue right then and there. Okay, so the first part we're going to start here is obviously within agent workspace. Um, this is where the agents would presumably be the recipient of any interaction, uh, be it a chat, uh, a case item, a uh, ticket, in this case, or, or a call. This is presumably where you'd want them to operate from. So uh, agent workspace, obviously your work can come in through your inbox. The CTI is this phone icon here in the bottom left-hand corner. So the frame itself is actually open frame. And in this case, we've used uh, 3C Logic to embed our telephony application. Um, but to the agent, it's one seamless experience, right? Um, one of the things that you can do with open frame, which is quite cool, and I'll show you how to administer that in the background, is you can actually allow for calls to be synced side by side with the other digital channels. In other words, you can have a universal agent status. They're not marking themselves available in one platform for chats and another one for telephony. It's all one single experience. So if I go ahead and mark myself available for calls, you can see how now this agent uh, is available uh, and qualified to receive any interaction across all of these channels, including telephony, which we are bringing in natively into the ServiceNow experience. And what's cool there is when you talk about channel management, if you were to do something as basic as doing an outbound call, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a click the call from uh, ServiceNow. It's gonna call my cell phone here and we'll go ahead and accept, right? What you can see is I have all of the telephony call controls um, and at the same time, ServiceNow is equally recognizing that I as an agent, I'm on a call It'd be great if you don't distribute additional work items to me because it's quite likely that I may not be in a position to address them in a timely fashion. So if there is another case or a chat that presumably could go to another agent who they are available, go ahead and send it to them until I'm done with this call. So again, the same thing could be done in the form of a screen pop um, in the interest of time. I know it's a Friday. Uh, I won't go through an entire inbound IVR call, but you can identify an individual based on the prompts that they give you and it could be their case number, it could be their phone number, um, and so forth. But anything and everything that happens at the end of an engagement can be tracked inside of the phone logs and tied back to that 
customer, case, ticket, whatever the service record within ServiceNow could be. And you have all the relevant information, both previous calls as well as the ones that may have just been concluded in terms of what was the duration, what was the satisfaction of the call based on maybe outbound SMS surveys or telephony surveys that you might send to the customer post-call, um, as well as a link to the call recording. And then you could get into very interesting use cases uh, like speech analytics and sentiment scoring, um, which is something that's a whole different topic, but again, something that you could weave into the fabric of your ServiceNow investment. So again, the goal here is for telephony to be an extension that is complementary to the digital channels, is not meant to be a replacement. Again, we actually fully support the, uh, the, the idea behind call deflection. There are some things that really should never go to an agent. For example, something as simple as a password reset or a question that has already been addressed previously and is available to you in a knowledge base. But if and when there's a need to, you wanna make sure that your door remains open and that the access to your agents is actually streamlined. So if we go into a little bit of what that looks like in the background and we look at the administration, a couple things. So first open frame again is a platform component within ServiceNow. You can manage your configurations uh, depending on which solution you choose to use open frame to embed telephony. Again, selfishly, we're using our own product here, 3C Logic, um, but you can see how you can actually create your own CTI SKUs um, and have access to or point to the appropriate underlying service that's gonna fulfill the, uh, the telephony uh, use cases. You can also tie into advanced work assignment. So again, the ability to allow the synchronization of multiple service channels um, is done and configured in the background within ServiceNow. So if I pull up service channels here, you can see that this is where I can establish um, my case uh, workflow management, my call workflow management, as well as chat and incident and so forth, all of which are native to ServiceNow with the exception of telephony but is leveraging open frame to embed telephony as part of the total uh, customer service sort of supply chain or, or, or customer service chain. When you talk about the administration, one of the things that I know in our case we've done that's unique, but that's gonna sort of mirror what Josh has shown is we've embedded the telephony functions, the administrative components that actually sort of control the open frame, the CTI, and ultimately what the agent and customer experience might be. Um, so very quickly, you can see how we've got different projects, queues, um, the telephony prompts that you might want to give to individuals. When you talk about building call flows, and you'll see this is going to look very similar to what Josh was showing when it comes to building uh, chats uh, within virtual agent, is the embedded IVR, which again, IVR is just the call center terminology for call flows. You can build advanced dynamic flows that no different than in virtual agent, will query and look up information about an individual. Could be based on their phone number, could be based on information that you've prompted them to give you. For example, what is your case number? Um, or what's your employee ID number as another example? So you can check, is this person a VIP person as defined in ServiceNow? Um, you can also do fancy things where you can automatically query, are there any announcements that we should, as an institution, proactively give to customers based on the status of certain functions or infrastructure within, uh, within our organization. So for example, you could have, uh, you could create what we call an outage table that says, hey, uh, call flow, please check if there is a known outage. And if the answer is yes, then use you know, text to speech to dynamically add that message into the IVR until the time where it's no longer applicable and you can change it to no. So all of a sudden now your call flows are leveraging information that's in service now to not only impact how you route, but to whom, and more importantly, what is the information that you're gonna to present to the, uh, to the service now, or the, in this case, the customer service agent, so that they can actually facilitate the need, right? So Josh, with that, I'll, I'll pass it back to you, or I think I saw some questions coming in. Awesome, so thanks, G, that was really helpful. So I think what we wanted to do now is just kind of open it up um, for some Q and A. Um, Lauren, did you kind of want to just run through some of these Q and A that came in during the presentation? Yeah, it looks like we got a, a bunch of questions coming in. So I'll just read them out and then G or Josh, you guys can take turns answering, see who it corresponds more to, but we'll start off with this one. How can I get live agent support when I'm using virtual agent? Yeah, so live agent support is a topic within virtual agent that you get out of the box. And what you can actually do is you can, uh, if you're leveraging agent workspace in ServiceNow, or you can use the collaboration tool um, to be able to use more of the legacy chat 
Um, you can actually transfer people directly to Live Agent by allowing them to select it as part of one of as one of the topics that's presented, or midway through a you know a topic, if they're not able to get the help that they need, you can just auto route them to a Live Agent that way as well. So there's a few different ways that you can do it as part of it. Awesome. Um, can you speak to some of the analytical capabilities of virtual agent and open frame? Yeah, absolutely. G, do you want to start off with some of the analytical pieces of um, open frame? Well, there's a couple options. Just a quick uh, uh, update to the last question. You can also, when you click contact a live agent, that could also create uh, a request for a callback that would automatically get routed without you as a customer having to sit on hold waiting to receive an agent. So there's a couple different uh, you know, ways that you can skin that cat uh, to Josh's point. With regards to reporting and analytics, uh, we breezed through it. I mean, the, the goal wasn't to to go deep so much as give you a broad sense of what open frame can do, but any and all the call data that gets stored back into service now becomes uh, data and attributes that you can use and commingle within the service now reporting framework. It could be the traditional framework or it could be something like performance analytics. Uh, and the benefit there of course is now calls are being incorporated into the native data that for example, virtual chat uh, or a virtual agent would bring into the fold, right Josh? Exactly, yep. And uh, there's, there's a ton of out of the box capability around the dashboards that you get with virtual agent. Um, there's actually a performance analytics dashboard where you can really start to see case and incident deflection, um, how long people are interacting with these virtual chats as um, they come into your portals or on their mobile device. You can see where people are accessing them from, whether it's desktop or mobile. Um, but really start to get an idea around the money that you're actually saving using some key KPIs that are given um, with the dashboard that you get. Awesome. Someone asked, when we integrate virtual agent with Slack, we need to say hi to invoke it. Is there a way to invoke virtual agent with anything? For example, hello, hey, anything like that? Yeah, off the top of my head, uh, there may be a way through what are called slash commands. So essentially what those are is if you start in Slack by starting off with a slash um, and then putting in a certain word that is pre-configured, you may be able to start it directly from that. So there, there may be some opportunities to do it through that, that method. Awesome. Um, how can you go from a chat to a call? Yeah, so there's a few different ways in virtual agent um, you can do that. So probably the most common way is there is a button at the top of virtual agent chats where if users click it, they can actually start a call directly from the window. So it will launch their um, default application on their, that they have set on their computer for calls. So whether it's Skype um, or another application, you can actually build a number into virtual agent that it always gets routed to. Um, so that's something that you can do directly from there. And um, I don't know, G, if you want to add anything to that as far as creating a call directly from virtual agent. Well, that's that's one option. Of course, um, you know, people may not want to hold. Uh, so, you know, I'd like to get into a queue, present you some details. And then when you have an available agent, have them call me. Um, so it's called a virtual hold. So you get put into a, you know, a queue and you're in line, but you aren't physically waiting until you reach an agent. So you can create those, those cases and those cases can be presented to agents. And once they're accepted, it automatically creates a call to the customer. So there's a couple ways, just like you mentioned, Josh, to do it. It's just a matter of pursuing the one that makes the most sense, depending on the use case. Absolutely. We have a couple more questions. Um, how can you make sure you have the proper distribution of work for calls? Yeah, so that's... <laughs> So it, it has everything to do with skill-based routing uh, at the end of the day uh, and, and agent skills. Uh, you know, some companies, agents are multi-skilled. So you have one big queue and it just goes to the next available agent, whoever has the low or uh, highest idle time to make sure that you are distributing the workload. Of course, it's not always the case that agents are equally skilled or you might have different agents that speak only a subset of languages. And then there's also, that's just from the telephony side, there's also the additional layers that you can incorporate with regards to what's known about the customer and the agent uh, from their profiles within ServiceNow. All of that can be taken into account to make sure that calls go uh, to the appropriate group. And then you can have failover groups. So if a group is getting overloaded, um, real-time dashboards and, uh, uh, and wall boards can alert a supervisor uh, as to whether or not you're now you know, uh, exceeding or, or not meeting your SLAs. 
Uh, and so you can add agents to your queue. So knowledge is power. If you know where the issue is, you can resolve it. Um, but it's all part of the call flow management. Uh, it, it's at the core of what we do. But again, in, in complement to the information that's known about the individual and the agent in service now so that you can also, uh, you know, use that to, to maximize, you know, how quickly you can get a customer to an agent. Awesome. And what are the plugins that are required? For telephony? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so OpenFrame is one of them. It's a, it's a free platform component. It's really just a case of having to enable it. One of the common questions we get is if I enable OpenFrame, is, is all of a sudden a CTI going to be popping up for every agent uh, or, or ServiceNow user? The short answer is no. You can make it specific and role enabled. Um, so that primarily is what you need. Um, and then, yeah, of course, you would need this example, if it's not 3C Logic, at least the underlying telephony application that's going to manage the calls and the actual call media and signaling itself. It's all browser-based, um, so there's no download uh, in that regard. You just have to enable the appropriate permissions within ServiceNow um, and then have, you know, in this case, 3C Logic uh, available as well. Awesome. Now we have a couple of questions coming in about licensing models or price of cost. Um, Josh, maybe you could cover virtual agent and then G, you cover 3C's license model. Yeah, so for anything really related to the licensing around virtual agent, I think I would probably defer to your uh, sales representative from ServiceNow in regard to any of those questions. Um, they're probably the best person to, to reach out to regarding that information. So with regards to 3C Logic, I would echo the same answer. And, uh, it's not my job to provide pricing, uh, but um, I can tell you that the model, it is a license-based model. Um, so very similar to, to how ServiceNow is, 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 is modeled. Um, and then there are different forms of deployments uh, when it comes to minutes and so forth, but it, it's a licensing model. And depending on the, the number of agents you have and you know, the, the, the complexity of, of your call center or the one that you like to build, those all are taken into account, which is where a scoping discussion would, would be the proper avenue to pursue to, to really give you something relevant to, to go by. Awesome. And someone else asked about the timeline for implementation. So I'm assuming it would depend on the scope of the project. It does. Uh, what I'll say is, is um, at least with regards to what we fulfill within ServiceNow, we do a lot of side-by-side -side deployments uh, with ServiceNow projects. Uh, I mean, we've worked side-by-side -side with GlideFast. So typically, you can actually simultaneously deploy both. Um, you don't have to break it up in phases. Most deployments on average are measured in weeks. Um, this is not a six, nine month or, 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 or one year program. Usually you're up in, in about six to eight weeks, give or take. Again, of course, you know, how long's a rope, the size of the project can have, can move that a little bit, but that's typically where you find yourself. And that includes training, configuration, um, and all that stuff. Um, but that looks like all the questions that we had. So I'd like to announce the winner of our $50 Visa gift card. And it looks like the winner is Sarah Burakowska. Uh, sorry if I pronounced your last name wrong, but congrats, Sarah. Um, your gift card will be emailed to you directly. Um, thank you to everyone for attending today's webinar. We really hope you um, enjoyed it, found it insightful. Thanks to G from the 3C Logic team. Um, I know it's a Friday, but thanks so much for that wonderful information. And thanks to Josh um, for stepping in and giving us some of his time and speaking on Virtual Agent. And just so you all know, um, today was the last on air for GlideFast for the next month, but we are returning in the fall. So don't worry, we have a lot more content lined up for you guys. Thanks everyone, have a great weekend.